Behind me is Sydney Harbour. Oh, Got to change the Australian setting. Behind me is beautiful Sydney Harbour and during World War II it became a major port for the Allies. American, Australian, British and New Zealand Navy ships were all based here at some point. In fact, just over the Harbour Bridge is Cockatoo Island, where 250 ships were repaired or converted for wartime use. So it was a major player in the Battle of the Pacific. It was so important, it actually became a target. And in 1942, three midget Japanese submarines attacked Sydney Harbour. Their objective was to wipe out high priority targets. And at the top of their list was USS Chicago. The midget submarine was built specifically for this kind of mission. Their small size allowed them to infiltrate shallow harbour waters, giving them the element of surprise. They were operated by just two people and armed with two torpedoes. For the Japanese, a successful attack on Sydney Harbour with the possibility of sinking a heavy cruiser like USS Chicago would bring them closer to winning their fight in the Pacific. Australia knew this type of attack was possible and Sydney Harbour had its own defences. Several boats patrolled the waters between the heads. Indicator loops were installed, which are long cables positioned on the seafloor that can detect the magnetism of overhead vessels. Finally, an almost mile-long boom net was being installed across the harbour. Construction had started four months ago, but at the time of the attack, there were still two gaps unfinished on either end. At 8pm on the 31st of May 1942, the first submarine entered the harbour. To help navigate the harbour and avoid detection, it followed a local ferry. As it passed by the indicator loops, the submarine did register, but the results were passed off by operators as an anomaly. The midget submarine headed towards the gap at the west end of the boom net. As it tried to pass through, the propeller became entangled. It was stuck. Above them, the Australian patrols had become aware of a peculiar object caught in the boom net as the front end of the submarine had now become visible in the water. After over an hour of deliberation, which included poking at it with an oar, they deduced it was, in fact, a submarine and the harbour was under attack. Two depth charges were dropped on the submarine, but neither exploded. As a third charge was being prepared, the Japanese soldiers chose to detonate an onboard explosive rather than surrender. As these events unfolded, the two other midget submarines had made their way into the harbour. The self-explosion had alerted everyone that something was going on. The sailors aboard the USS Chicago spotted a periscope in the water and eagerly opened fire with whatever they could. This included firing 5-inch artillery shells that failed to penetrate the water but rather skimmed across the surface and caused structural damage around the harbour. Luckily, nobody was hurt. The HMAS Uranda had spotted the other submarine and dropped several depth charges in the water. The sound of explosions and gunfire all around the harbour woke thousands of Sydney residents. The USS Chicago, on full alert, was ordered out to sea. Before they could do so, they were fired upon. Two torpedoes shot across the harbour from one of the midget submarines. One torpedo ran aground on Garden Island and had failed to explode. The other missed the USS Chicago and exploded against the harbour wall underneath the HMAS Cuttable. The HMAS Cuttable was an old ferry that had been repurposed into naval accommodation. The explosion caused catastrophic damage and led to the loss of 21 sailors aboard, 19 of whom were Australian and two were British. Without any torpedoes left, the midget submarine headed out of the harbour and managed to escape. The remaining submarine wasn't that lucky. Hunted by several ships in the harbour, it was eventually cornered in Taylor's Bay and depth charged. On board, the Japanese sailors chose not to surrender and had taken their own lives. The two wrecks were raised from the water and toured around Australia to raise war bonds. But what happened to the midget submarine that escaped was a mystery until its wreck was discovered over 64 years later. Since then, the site has been left untouched and it's believed the two crew perished with the submarine. The USS Chicago never survived the war. She was sunk less than a year later on the 30th of January, 1943. In the United States Navy, several vessels have been named after Chicago. The first was USS Chicago, launched in 1885 and served in World War I, before its namesake was passed on in 1928. After our featured USS Chicago sank, the new USS Chicago was launched in 1944 and served in the remainder of World War II and Vietnam. 
She was decommissioned in 1980, stripped and scrapped, and her anchor is now on display at Navy Pier. Currently, the USS Chicago is a nuclear submarine that launched in 1984. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe for more Chicago content. I hope you like this on location video in Australia. I have to go and catch a plane.